Welcome back to Hometown TCG, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John. <laughs> and I'm Josh. And today we are continuing our Initial Thoughts series on the Monarch Heroes. Uh, so we're going to be looking at Prism today, but before we do, make sure to click subscribe uh, to get all our videos, uh, to get more of our Initial Thoughts. Um, but let's get into it. Let's get right into Prism, and I think this is going to be one of the most interesting decks that is going to come out in the meta because the way I see it, there's almost two ways to play Prism. Mm -hmm. You can go the weapon route, you're making a lot of shields, whether it's your, your aura cards or your spectral shield tokens, or you have hit with big stick Prism, right? You have these giant attacks, these phantasmifies, and maybe some frontline scouts to get into some hands, mm -hmm. right? So we see two build paths here. Which one do you want to talk about first? Right, so let's, let's talk about some of these attacks. Okay. Okay, so uh, obviously the Heralds are amazing, and They're at very 7 good. damage, uh, unless you have a 6 damage attack to block them with, it's easy to hit and get yes. into your soul. So that can kind of set you up. It does um, present some terrible matchup problems, though, like you said, does. with that 6 damage attack. So let's not get... Let's not be a runaway train with our giant damage attacks here. Yeah, so the problem with her is if you're playing a Brute or a Guardian type of thing with huge attacks, uh, it's just a bad matchup. You're probably you're going to get outvalued. Hit, and you have to be able to pivot then. And the mm -hmm. pivot strategy seems to be into the, the aura and shield through the use of weapons such as either Iris of Reality or Luminaris to attack. Mm -hmm. Yes, and some of some of the other auras she can play out, I mean, they're really great. They're fantastic. The the, the Arc Light Arc Light Sentinel is fantastic, mm -hmm. especially for decks like Brute that want to buff a bunch of their attacks. Right, gives you an opportunity to interrupt maybe that big attack. Mm -hmm. uh, so even your generic Spectral Shield tokens, if you can keep them alive, provide great damage on your next right, turn. Right, and then you have you do have things like uh, Ode to Wrath, I believe, which makes all of your opponent's attacks when they're attacking and defending. Uh, do minus one damage. Absolutely. So if your opponent defends with the six, it doesn't break your things anymore. So you have some options like that to help counter it. Absolutely. And what I'm really looking forward to is trying to build a deck that can kind of pivot between the two of them. Okay, so we talked about the two strategies, and we're mm -hmm. thinking that the best way to go here is somewhere in the middle, where based on your matchup and your sideboard in and out, you could play a different version of the same deck. Mm -hmm. And that might even be switching weapons. I, I don't know yet. I think, I think that will have a place, uh, but we'll, we'll see exactly how that goes. Well, we just realized that the Luminaris gives all of your Illusionist attacks go again if you have a yellow pitch in the yeah. pitch zone, right? So it's not it's not just your tokens, it's not just your auras, it's all your attacks. I thought it was just auras, <laughs> and you told me that, and it, yeah. it blew my I mean, my when, mind. I, when I read it uh, at first, I thought it was the same thing, and yeah. I actually pulled it in the pre-release. Um, oh, you this is actually it? a funny thing. I pulled in the release. I didn't even realize I had it. I put it with my tokens. Oh, <laughs> um, no. You so, still, you so I had me. that, and I did not and I did not know it gave you things go again. So you have some things that are crazy, like her yes. Majestic, Herald of Erudition, is hit, draw two cards, and if you pitched a yellow, you get go again. You get go again if you're playing Luminara. So you hit, draw two cards, go again. It has Dominate. You can the play... You can play the Tome to draw three more cards. You can play the library if you really want to have a hand of five cards. See, there's so much to do with this hero, and it brings us to the big question, right? We've, we've kind of got all these initial thoughts that are coming out of this hero. Where do you think she's going to sit in the meta? Is she going to find her way into Tier 1, Tier 2, or Tier 3? And I'm going to take this one. I put okay. you on the spot okay. in our last two videos. If you haven't seen them, check them out. I put them on the spot. It's funny. I think she's going to be... Tier 1. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, if you have a deck that can, we're speculating, it can do so many things, that means to me it can adapt well to the meta. And anything that can adapt well, it can adapt and overcome, is going to be a good deck in the meta. I think she'll be Tier 1. I do too. Uh, she can adapt, and her cards, they're just super efficient. The damage to pitch ratio, and she has the best attack in the game with Phantasmoclasm. Absolutely. Say well, Phantasmoclasm again. Phantasmoclasm. It's such a cool card to say. So we both think she's going to be tier one. I think she's going to be interesting. And most importantly, and I don't want to speculate too soon, I think we might have found our Ira matchup. <laughs> We're about to find out. So we're going to be doing some testing on that, see how she plays out in Blitz against the top dogs, um, and then we'll have the Constructed Challenge. Oh, the Constructed Challenge. That'll be great. But until next time, thanks for watching, guys. My name is Josh. And I'm John. And we'll see you in the next one.